Hello, my name's Ivor Otley and welcome to my video tutorial on creating photographic montage images. So here we are in Lightroom. I've looked through the images and I've selected a sequence that I think will work well as a montage. Just to talk about that a little bit, if I look at some of these earlier images, you can see that the bird is quite big in the frame and that means there's a lot of detail contained within the image and these would be good kind of portrait shots but if you look at the montage images you can see that the birds are actually smaller in the frame and whilst I could for example choose maybe this image and crop it that would actually work well I could edit that to um, be quite good as a, a separate image I just had a different idea, a creative idea of the montage showing the bird in flight, especially as this was a single burst of shots, maybe two or three seconds. The first thing to do is to edit these pictures before I export them to Photoshop. I don't do much heavy editing in Lightroom. I just use Lightroom to balance the light in an image and to pull out a bit more detail before exporting to Photoshop and then doing my heavy editing. So if we go to the develop module, I click on the first image in the sequence and you can see that actually I've already edited this image. If I show you the next image, which I haven't edited, you can see that it's quite a bit darker. If I switch between the two. So what I've done here is I've lightened the image and just brought out a bit more detail in the bird. Because I'm combining all these images as a montage, I need to make sure that the settings, that the look of all the images are fairly similar or are the same. So the way to do that is to copy the settings of the first edited bird, go to settings, copy settings. These ticked items contain some of the things that I've changed in the editing, I copy. I then highlight the unedited images at the bottom here, right click those, develop settings, paste settings and that should copy the settings from the first image across to those other images which it has done. So if I now scroll between those images and you look here you can see the uh, settings remain the same. So that's good. A couple of things to mention about the editing here. One is that I never make whites pure white or blacks pure black. I always leave room for further editing later in Photoshop so nothing is blown out. There's still detail in the white, it's not pure white. And the other thing is that um, in terms of sharpening, I don't like Lightroom sharpening so I don't use that. But I do select remove chromatic aberration and I do enable profile corrections. And that's where the software counteracts the distortions in my particular lens. It selects it automatically as it probably will your lens. To export to Photoshop, you can highlight all of those images, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. You click that and it automatically exports the images from Lightroom to Photoshop and opens them in separate layers in the one project. Welcome back. Here we are in Photoshop and as you can see in the layers panel here, Lightroom has exported my images and they've all opened on a separate layer within one project in Photoshop. So these are the separate layers and these are the separate images. So to create a montage, first thing to do is to select a background layer and what I'm looking for here is the best background for the image. So I'm looking at the background layer from two points of view. Firstly, creatively, does it look how I want it to look? Secondly, 
technically, am I able to create the image that I have in my mind using that background layer? In this instance, I know that I'm going to be placing the birds towards the outside of the picture. So the central bird in this background layer won't be needed. So the best approach with this would be to clone out that bird and that gives me a completely fresh background layer with which I can place birds in any position I want them to be in. It could have been that I chose a background layer with a bird in a position that I wanted it to be in, in which case I could have just left that background layer as it was and then just laid in the other birds around that original bird in the positions that I wanted them to be in. So here is the background layer I've selected. You can see that I've labelled it background. To label a layer, you just hover over the background name and double click it. You get the blue surround and then you can label it anything you like. So I'll label it background again. I like to drag the background layer to the bottom of the layers panel. I like to work with the background on the bottom and then adding the other layers as I go up. So I just left click on the background layer, pull it down to the bottom and let go and there it's moved to the bottom. The next step is to clone out the bird and I never do that kind of work on the original layer. Instead, I click on create new layer. I make sure that the background layer and the new layer are the only two which are visible and that's by clicking on this eye symbol and I select the new layer. Go over to the clone stamp tool. Once you've clicked on the clone stamp tool symbol you can right click on the image and that brings up a dialog box which allows you to change the brush size and the hardness. At the top of the screen, you can see that you can change the flow and opacity. Like a lot of photographers, I use a Wacom Intuo pen and tablet, so I can vary the pressure I'm applying very much like I would if I was painting. The way the clone stamp tool works is you need to select an area from where to clone from. And if you click the option key on a Mac, it brings up this symbol. You can hover that symbol over where you want to clone from and then left click and that locks in that particular area as the place you're going to be cloning from. If you notice with this bird, the bottom of it here is in this transition area where it goes from this kind of brown colour into the lighter colour. And I need to replicate that in the background once the bird is removed. So a good way to do that is to clone either from the left or the right of the bird in that transition area. So I set the flow quite low. I want things to be quite subtle when I'm editing, but that depends on what you're doing. So I'm kind of in line. You can see the cross there shows you where you're cloning from, and I'm just painting that in slowly. I like to take my time. So I'm fairly happy with that. If you notice here, there's actually a dust spot, and I could use the clone tool to take it out but actually I'll use another tool, which is the spot healing brush. So you click on that. You can just paint over that dust spot and it will remove it. And what that tool does is it takes a sample from another area and just clones from that area onto the area you're painting on another little one down here. So it's good to clean up your images. If you notice there are actually, if I zoom in, some dust spots here which were actually in the atmosphere when I took the shot but I don't mind them so I'm happy to leave them. So you notice now we have a clean background layer and if I toggle on and off the new layer where we did the cloning you can see the bird appearing and disappearing. 
So what I normally do now is select the original background layer and the cloned layer and I blend them together on a new layer. And to do that, I use this rather convoluted shortcut, Shift, Option, Command, E on a Mac, and that's created a new layer. And I'll double click that, and I'll call that Background, Blend. And to be very tidy, I can select two original layers and then click the Create a New Group button and that puts them into a folder which I can then call background clone. I can deselect that. It's just there if ever I needed to go back and see what I've done. So now we're left with a clean background layer on which we can add the birds from these other layers to create our montage. What I will need to do now is for each individual layer, for each image, I need to isolate the bird. So if I select the top image, you can see that I've highlighted that layer and that's the only image that, that you can see. I then go to select and I'm going to use subject. When you select the focus area mode, it just selects what it thinks is in focus and puts a selection around that. And when you press subject, it isolates what it feels is the main subject. And because with this image, the background is very uncluttered, I think that to select subject makes quite a good selection. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be good enough for now. I've got a selection. I go down to the Add Layer Mask button, I click on that, and it's just selected the bird from the background. If I click on the next image, get rid of that one, I highlight it, and I do the same thing for that. So select, subject, seems OK. A mask, so that's that one, the next one. And I'm just going through the entire project, doing that for each layer. Go down, add layer mask, click on that. I've got four layers on which I've isolated the bird from the background. If I bring up one of those masks, you can see that the background is black and the bird is white. And that's because with masks, black conceals and white reveals. So the white of the mask is letting the bird part of the image through, but concealing, hiding the background. If we now add the background layer we prepared earlier, you can see we have a background layer with four birds we've isolated. If we go over to the move tool and click on that, now we should be able to left click on each individual bird and move it to wherever we want in the image. Let's say there for now. So we have complete control over where we put those birds. I've zoomed in to this one image so that I can show you how we refine the mask by using the paintbrush tool to paint black or white onto the mask. So I go over and select the paintbrush tool. I can see here that they are set to black and white. If they weren't, if these were set to other colours, you just click here and that sets them back to black and white. 
So I'm using black and white paint on the mask, changing between the two using the X key on my keyboard and just refining and going over the edge of the bird so that I'm happy with the transition between the bird itself and the new background layer. If you've selected the mask and you press the backslash key on your keyboard, that brings up a red overlay which shows you what you've revealed and what you've concealed. And that can be very useful to check that you haven't missed anything. So here I am in my original project. You can see in the layers window all my bird layers. I've made a blend of those layers here by selecting all the layers and using my convoluted shortcut Shift, Option, Command and E, which we did earlier. So I can then go on and edit the image as I would any other image. So here is my final montage, fully edited.